This is uh, my first time ever here. So we just rolled in um, about 10 minutes ago. So I'm a little bit road weary from a seven hour drive, which we didn't quite know was happening. But um, <clears throat> but I was excited to be able to do this because for me, being a performer and being involved in the world of performance and stage and music is really actually just one foot in the door of um, of activism, of education and of outreach and using collective powers and collective energies as a tool for us to be that much more fine-tuned culturally and holistically, individually and, and in the collective. So. So I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, and there's like 50 different varieties of what that means for me and for the kind of crew at large that we speak to and speak of. Um, we do a lot of work with with kind of empowering the dialogue around and around being Southern, which is a really big important part of our of our tool, talking about how uh, this this landscape and the whole southern southeastern region is tied very closely to a lot of historical atrocities and uh, and it 's also tied still very closely to to uh, a really negative reputation, but that it 's also tied very closely to <clears throat> a profound amount of culture, cultural integrity and human rights work and a lot of the movement that was about keeping culture slow and intact. People sat on porches and shared meals with each other and, and really kept a lot of the underbelly of a lot of the activist movements, you know, within the indigenous communities and also within the within the segregation and anti-segregation movements and, and now currently in the environmental movements as well. Uh, there's still a lot of radicalism that stays very strong in the South. And, uh, and I'm part of a project called Alternate Roots, which is uh, a, a collaborative effort of working artists all over all over the, the South Southern region that are all using art as a tool for social change. So. So it's been just this a massive, massive, em empowering and important part of, of the work with, with Rising Appalachia is, is trying to figure out how to make art, but not just art for art's sake, although that is also very valid, because I, I, I really believe that it's cathartic and an important process to be just in the act of creating and in creative spaces. But then maybe one, two, three tiers further, how can you direct your creativity in a way that is a catalyst for, for social justice, or if that's not your thing, maybe it's a catalyst for dialogue, or maybe it's a catalyst for more creativity, or it's a catalyst for, you know, it, 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 so it needs to speak to whatever it is that speaks to you, but starting to integrate um, and, and be involved with, with, with finding more and more purpose in, in, our, in our work, and uh, and I was talking with, with an amazing activist and, and, and elder today. Her name is Winona Leduc, and she does a lot of work with the native indigenous rights and the anti-pipeline work that's going on in the Midwest right now. And, um, and we're getting ready to, to launch a small run with her. And she was talking to me. <clears throat> this is a new, we're kind of new friends and comrades, and we're really excited to be communicating. And she said, you know, I'm fighting a battle, and it's not because I want to be fighting a battle at all. I would actually rather be planting a garden, you know, and um, h hanging out and singing in the in in my yard and making a really powerful relationship in my neighborhood, and and I am doing those things also. This is her speaking still. She said, "But I'm fighting a battle not because I, I'm interested in in a, being a warrior, but because." It's getting things are being stripped out from under us every day, every second, every every step of the way. There's pipelines, there's logging, there's there's coal mining, there's mountaintop removal, and then you can sort of turn an eye to it, or you can step in and be like, I have to gear part of my energy towards that, and and you know, 
to that place where you're not where you're still able to find joy and move in 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 a joyful place you cannot really push yourself so far that you go to burnout and and these are all kind of long and lofty dialogues that we have on our on our extensive road trips between shows to try and figure out okay how can we like take this this entity this element of thank you of um of performance and this incredible power of, of, of art. And I think all art really speaks to that, but performance has an extra strong leg. And, and in my opinion, music has the, the strongest of all, fortunate to me, I guess. Uh, but it's also this like, international language where like, you, everybody likes some form of music, you know? So, so how can we step into this role of, of performance and figure out how to create a space where we can engage the communities that we're, we're, we're in and working in and, and not necessarily stand up here and like preach. This is probably more chatting than I would ever get to do otherwise, which is great because I love chatting. But, but, you know, how can we create an engaged performance that starts to fill in all those blanks? And, and this is really amazing that you all are doing this, this very concept, because I think the most incredible part of people power is to gather us, you know? See what happens when we are all in one space and you rub elbows with your neighbors and you hear what kind of work is being on near you, going on in your neighborhoods, what kind of work is going on across the country, across the world. How can you glean little pieces of inspiration from that? How can you take ideas and thoughts from a, from a very wide range of perspectives and apply them into your neighborhood. And I think, you know, direct action is the most powerful when you, when you start it in your own collectives, in your own communities. So it's really, it's really amazing to be here. Oh,